All right. First episode of the new year. Yeah. Uh, you may notice some sweet new animations that we hooked up. Yeah. Trying something new. This is the weekly roundup podcast. We got book reviews coming and um, movie book reviews. reviews. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Might hit a little more, like Netflix reviews, who knows? We'll see, yeah. we'll see. Game reviews, event reviews. Oh. Um, yeah. We'll right. see, we'll see. All right, all right. It's all right. Um, merchandise. Yes, uh, pick some teas on Teespring, shop.glamyfair.com, support the cra- support the podcast on Patreon. Although, you'll be prompted multiple times through the animation. If you check out the top left. Of our video? What? Yes, ads galore. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can also do these things. Uh, subscribing, liking, sharing, uh, commenting, and video replying. Are we still using yes. that? Yes. We got, uh, we're going to do it for one more year. Okay. Video replies. We're waiting oh for your video God. replies, everyone. Maybe we'll make that as like a little ad on the top, but yeah. Cool. Here we go. Three, two, one. And boom. We are back with another episode, New Year, of Scratch Gamers Podcast. It's 2010. 2019 edition yeah mess that one up as you may notice we have uh some sweet overlays to your top left there is some uh rotating graphics prompting you to do things and uh bottom left (laughs) and right is uh, a little bit of info if you want to get in contact or play some video games with us but vish has already said that he does not want to add any of you but i'll add all of you because I'm just friendly like that. Right, Vish? Uh, okay. Yeah, you're throwing me under the bus here. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm really <laughs> kidding. Anyways, so uh, this is 2019. New Year, same you. Right. And in keeping with our sameness, we have our dog in the background. You hear her whining? That's right. Uh, oh, she's going to run away. Uh, we have <laughs> got our weekly roundup. Talking about four things in the week that we thought were cool and deconstructing them in a very Socratic way as we play video games. Yeah. Hence Socratic Gamers. So first, on the docket, Vish, what you got? Uh, well, China lands on the moon. What? Okay. On the dark uh, side of the moon. Oh, interesting. Okay. Surprise, surprise. We never, uh, we never talk about these topics <laughs> throughout the week, so these are genuine reactions. Okay, I've never heard of this. Go ahead. Yeah, so China sent... Um, Oh, well, I get one. So one is a lander, one's a rover, and uh, okay. Oh, they no, land, humans uh, didn't land on the moon. More like they've landed things on the moon. Yeah. Okay. Well, but cool. no human. Yeah, not, it's not humans, but no. Even then, still no robots have landed on the dark side of the moon. Oh, that's cool. Didn't know that. Mm-hmm. They're trying to do the first one. Nice. Um, so. Why was it so difficult to do that? Because uh, it's well, from Earth, it's too hard to send signals. Because mm, it's on the other yeah. side, we never see that side. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, uh, they, they 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 sent some pictures that they could get mm-hmm. from the dark side. That's cool. Or the uh, the ones that we can't see. The, like the sun is all or the moon is always uh, half lit, right? Okay. So the ones they had were had uh, there was light in that picture, like the moon, whatever from the sun. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, it's just. We never get to see that side. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way that the moon axes around the Earth, we only see it. It, ro- it rotates, but it rotates along with just facing us in a way. Okay. But we never get to see the dark side. But how do you take a photo of the dark side without any light? No. No, we call it the dark side from a perspective of Earth. Oh. But the moon is always half lit. Okay, I understand. Even when we get like oh the, the you know the different moon shapes, right? The the moon, whatever, yeah, the yeah, shapes, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the moon is still half lit. Right, 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 right for sure, yeah, of course. But yeah. it's it's like when it gets slo- smaller and smaller. So the, so the dark side of the moon is really a misnomer. It's just uh, no, it's it's just we don't get to see that side. From Earth, we never get to see that side. Okay, that's why we call it the dark side of the. Right, no, but like, but my, it's my never, it's not, like it's, it's just a, dark, ma- like black, it's, a ma- it's like, like a, it's just a metaphor kind of thing. Okay. It's not an actual, like, it never just, gets done. That's why I said it was a misnomer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right, that's cool. Yeah. So they sent, they sent some images and stuff. So the, like, we, the reason why I think we've never done it is uh, it, to, to send a signal on the other side of the moon is difficult. 
So the way they did it was having right, because you'd they have paid to, for a satellite. They had a satellite yeah, out there. That makes sense. Uh, and then because the satellite is sending through the, the entire the moon. Yeah. Moon, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. So you'd yeah. have like an orbiting satellite, and then it would bounce off that satellite. Your your signal from space will bounce off that satellite into the dark side of the moon. Yeah. So they bridge cool. the yeah they bridge the signal with the satellite. Um, Fun fact: Pink Floyd's uh, CD is called Dark Side of the Moon. So they've got some, well, I guess, yeah, they sent the first images. Now they're going to do, like, I guess, um, sample testings and stuff because they can drill into the ground. Oh, no way. Are they going to look for, so they're basically looking for resources to see if they can bring anything uh, back to it? Basically, that's what that is all about. That's what these missions are about. Resource, yeah. yeah. It makes it's sense. always about resources. It's funny how it's like we, we go from, like, um, countries mm-hmm. that that have like a lack of resources so we send like ships out and then we've we've conquered the globe so now we're sending our ships well now space. everyone's got their sovereign nations kind of thing so it's like you can't just take over another country yeah, yeah, yeah so it's like you, you ever hear of treasure planet <laughs> the remember the animated treasure planet yeah i think so yeah so um they were like in space so basically they were like pirates or whatever mm-hmm. and like they just switched it out instead of like the open waters it's like the open space Dude, oh, I want to play okay. Assassin's Creed uh, 4. I think that's the one where you were a pirate. I had so many good memories playing that game. Because <laughs> you just, like, whale. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. But, I mean, like, I wouldn't do that now because Red Dead 3 or 2. Yeah. What we're playing right now is, like, so, so much better. Mm. So they, they, yeah. they, they landed the, the lander and the rover on... Um, in like an impact crater that was there. Mm-hmm. It's about a fifteen hundred mile damn crater. So oh, not really a crater. Oh, it's also be more like a cavern. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. So there, that's where they landed the thing. There's some images. It's pretty interesting. Well, I mean, whatever they can do, right? Right. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. True. Yeah, that's a simple. So China uh, mission. That's China mission. They're getting mission, into space. Uh, yeah, going into space. All right. So speaking of Eastern concepts. Because it's China East, you know what I'm saying? So uh, Zen Buddhas. I was thinking about this. I wrote I wrote an article about it. You can check it out called Laugh at My Pain. Mm-hmm. Ironically, not ironically, but alluding to um, Kevin Hart's special called... Oh, look. She's just <laughs> she's looking at us. Um, yeah. So it's alluding to uh, Kevin Hart's special called Laugh at My Pain. Okay. And what I noticed about these comedians is like... So all life, it boils down to a comedy or a tragedy. Right. Right? So whatever. <laughs> and the tragedy for Athena is that she's not being loved. All right, I'm going to go get her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> cut this again. Cut now. And we are back. We cut quickly to uh, capture our dog and give her a little bit of love. All right, so what's was saying? Zen Buddhas. Yes. So uh, all life really does come down to either a comedy or a tragedy. If you think about it, like some, mm-hmm. some experience will happen to you. Yeah. Right, and you'll be like, "Oh, that's so funny," or alternatively, you'll be like, "Oh, that sucks." Right, I'm so sad. It really depends on your like perspective outlook. Mm-hmm. And um, I find that so most people think like comedians are like funny all the time, right? They're like, "Oh, they're so funny," whatever, whatever. Uh, but really, they come from like a disturbed past. Like Joe Rogan always mentioned it, yeah. and like if you really look into it, um, oh like, yeah, like their yeah. bios and stuff. They all they all had like a really weird upbringing, right? And Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's basically that whole idea of, like, comedy and tragedy. It's, like, what, where are you going to take it? So it's, like, okay, I was abandoned as a child. Either that's really funny and you poke fun at it Uh to get some levity or you, like, turn into, like, a negative Nelly about it, you know? Yeah. And uh, and when I was in – I was taking the psych course once and what they said was the people that have the most objective look on reality are usually super depressed. Mm-hmm. Right, and it makes complete sense because it's like the depressed ones. Like the reason why you're depressed is because you're looking at your life. You're like, oh, it's so futile. Whereas like the optimistic ones are the ones who are like hopeful. They're a little bit deluded. They're like, I can be this one day, right? Right. But then the depressed ones, like, okay, if you really look at the probability, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and that's why like certain comedian, oh, all comedians, they they socially dissect things, right? They're seeing things that we don't see, yeah, and then they're like giving their humorous take on it. Right, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. my my favorite example because I really like him. I remember him from Two Guys, a Girl, and Pete's Place. Yeah, uh, Ryan Reynolds. So everyone knows him now as being like a really funny guy, right? But I was watching this interview mm-hmm. and he was saying like how he suffers from like depression and anxiety, 
Yeah. And um, it stems from, like, his father, because his father was, like, an army person. He's like, always, you'll never be enough, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so, like, it carried with him, right? Yeah. And, like, his whole movie career was, like, filled with, like, B-list movies. Like, even though I thought they were great, like, Van Wilder and, like, mm-hmm. or, like Blade Trinity, he was never, like, an A-list actor, right? So he was always thinking, like, oh, I'm never going to make it, blah, 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 right? And, like, but he's so funny. But he doesn't realize that, like, or maybe he does realize, who knows, um, that like his look on it is a very like Zen Buddha look because like when when you look at it objectively, you know you see yeah. the ridiculousness of the situation. He was on Ellen, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to donate this twenty thousand dollar check to your charity, right?" And he's like, "Oh, look, an oversized check that you can't actually cash, <laughs> right?" It's like it's like that's so real. Whereas a lot of us, we play the the humorous role. Oh, we play the deluded role of like, "Oh, this is such an honor," blah blah blah. Yeah, but like. Yeah. But then, like, the Zen people would say, like, why is it an honor? Like, why do you think it's so important? Mm-hmm. Right? Just to get you out of your own head. Of, like, it really isn't important. Yeah. Right? And I find yeah. that he does that a lot with his humor. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah, comedians. Even though... So, but, again, it goes back to the whole thing of, like, the person who suffered the most is usually the best one to get you out of the situation. Yeah. Right? Because, like, so it's like, why are you so funny? Well, because I suffered and I had to figure out how to make it funny. Mm-hmm. Right, or else I would just be sad. Yeah, you know, nobody right. wants that. Yeah, yeah, just interesting outlooks. So if you look at like, I think comedians are like Zen Buddhas over time. You would never call them that, but if we were like thousands of years in the past, and then like they'd meet these, like, oh my yeah. god, he was so crazy, he's so funny, he was full <laughs> of life, right? Like a uh, Buddha, the the um, happy Buddha. Yeah, they were saying like he often gets confused with uh, Gautama. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Gautama yeah. is all about renunciation, like, all right, leave this world, it's mm-hmm. attachment. Whereas the Budai is the happy Buddha who loves all of life because he's like, oh, it's like, well, it's very few, like, uh, fleeting, gotta enjoy it. Right. Um, and I feel like these comedians are like the Budai of our time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just a thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. You guys, well, so you just completely agree with that one? Yeah, I mean, I don't have nothing else to really. Know. Yeah, ma- makes sense, right? <laughs> I know it does yeah. make sense because I know a lot of these comedians, even Jimmy Dore, like these kinds of guys are like mm. have these sort of pasts. Yeah, like Jimmy Dore's too. got that um, that spinal problem. Yeah, but that's that's. Uh, but it sucks. And remember, he's making uh, jokes about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah but yeah. I, uh, like I've seen his other interviews when he's talking about when he was the younger kid and stuff like mm, that. Okay. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, they come through these sort of paths yeah but it's like it's things that we all deal with it's just so it's like it's it's unordinary extraordinary you're mm-hmm. taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary by putting like a funny look on it yeah yeah I mean or actually that's both though taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary either in a positive or negative way yeah. hence the mm-hmm. comedy or tragedy you know, like oh my god the world's against me or right. like oh that's so funny you know yeah yeah outlooks people alright <laughs> oh it's yours while talking about comedies and all these contracts they're getting well, my top so with Netflix. Oh, cool. Very cool. <laughs> well, hey, it's related. See, I was <laughs> like, we're, we, we were talking about on our last one, it was like collective unconscious. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're doing right now. My so, belt. so this was about um, Netflix and they had their best um, view count, I guess, uh, for Bird Box. We talked about that oh, last yeah, yeah, one yeah. a little yeah. bit. Give a quick little review on it. Yeah, they said it, it reached 45 million accounts nice. watched Bird Box. Mm-hmm. Um, what I found interesting was because they don't follow the standard, like you don't know what the actual view count is. They're saying accounts watched, right? But under one account, oh, like true. we watched. So I watched it on my own. You watched it, right? But we all have one account. Yeah, on the yeah. same account. Mm-hmm. So the same account watching it more than once is still counted only as one View. Mm, so it's actually much higher than we think. So it's much higher, and the number of people that watched it was much... Or uh, did you notice Mach- Machine Gun Kelly was in there? In the movie? Yeah, he was the guy with the tattoos all over his body. No. Oh, well, he, I didn't was, catch he was one of the main characters. Oh, that was Machine Gun Kelly? Yeah. I saw it right away. I was like, oh, yeah. I didn't even dude. recognize him. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think people, like, they're diversifying to get into different roles. Just like uh, I was right. watching... Mark Wahlberg's... Uh, I didn't know that was him. Well, he looked familiar, but I didn't know it was him. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he, you know, Mark Wahlberg's... Uh, he, Mark Wahlberg, he came up in... Uh, yeah. uh, I think it was like 
and no, uh, New Kids on the Block, or that was his brother. Mm-hmm. He was a musician. He was a singer, yeah. right? And like, uh, right. then he became an actor. Mm. And it's like, you gotta diversify, you know. I think acting's where it's at, you know. Oh. You just, so it was, yeah. Uh, yeah, forty-five million accounts in seven days of watching. It's impressive. And uh, so to understand that, it's about they have total 137 million accounts and 58 of them are in America. Wow. So we don't know, like, yeah, I mean, who watched it more, like world views or is it more? Right, like, right, right. Uh, uh, what you call them? Yeah, like lo- uh, domestic. Mm. Um, and the other thing is that what they count as view count is also if you have watched more than 70 percent oh true yeah, yeah, yeah. so okay. they have to do it like yeah, that some too. people like do like three seconds and like pass yeah so that that was kind of interesting because they can't do like the normal box office stuff right because you can actually see how many tickets were sold right right you can tell exactly how if it was a success or not so i don't know how like they know like number of counts well, this is the highest the minimum number of counts have watched something so that they know is as a record, but they don't know how many people watched it. Right, right. And how do you kind well, of... Well, there's no way to track that, really. Yeah, you really don't know how to track mm-hmm. that unless you put cameras on there. Huh. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I thought that was kind of very interesting to see, like... Because uh, Netflix does never gives away these numbers. Right, 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 right. But I think they saw, like, oh, this is a huge success one. Yeah, so... And this can also push it. Yeah, like, sure. giving these numbers will also give another more push so people will go and watch... Like more ones who haven't watched it yet, for sure. or b- people versions. who haven't gotten accounts will make an account. <laughs> True, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, it's, it's a lot of that. I don't know how I'd feel with like if Netflix became like the movie outlet. You know, like if we stopped making movies for um, theaters and then we just started making it for Netflix, right? Like, I wonder if that's the future. But uh, I, will, I do I enjoy think... watching movies in a theater with yeah. other people. You know? Yeah, yeah. I do that. I do like that too. But I think uh, only when that will happen is when uh, they don't make any money in the theaters. True. They're still making a lot of money. True. Especially the Aquaman that we hated. Oh yes. Uh, but that I love made you, Jason Momoa. You're a funny <laughs> guy. But yeah, that. Uh, but the ticket sales were huge. Yeah. Right. Surprising. Exactly. I don't so, know. It's, it makes you think. Like, do people just want to be like entertain not have to think i think so you know what i mean because i think like, so people who work hard i just don't want to think <laughs> that's, that's kind of how i feel because like watching the movie i was like this is so dumb like it was it was a very like dim-witted lowbrow movie right yeah but then like it did so well so it's like is that just the telling sign of most people yeah well I, it didn't do well in domestically it took a while to get to 200 million i think it was and then mm. but to they made a lot more money worldwide. Well, yeah. Because, I mean, like, that's also political reasons, though, because maybe that's the only movie that could come at that time. You know, because they don't release all movies around the world, mm-hmm. only the blockbuster ones, right? That's why uh, Kevin Hart was saying that he wants to be an international superstar, not just a domestic one. Right, but that's hard, though. Well, yeah, of course. No, but what I'm saying like, is, like, you... different countries only allow certain movies in. Yeah. So it's maybe they're just like, okay, we know we're not going to do well domestically with this movie but we'll do amazing internationally right yeah uh, whatever <laughs> it's, it's all like business stuff that it's all to. of course yeah. so fascinating oh when yeah you, um, yeah but uh, actually well in relation mm-hmm. to that like escapism like that book I'm reading right now about opium uh, how most people did opium back in the day because it would help right. them escape from yeah. their suffering it's sort of like how we have movies now i think know? that's it's, what it's that is stuff. yeah it's just the same thing we just found oh, a, new, do a different book outlet book review oh yeah yeah podcast yeah anyways sorry uh yeah it's just a it's a different outlet right yeah exactly yeah, it, yeah. it just replaces that we yeah, have to sure. find something to entertain us wow uh, and that's i kind of like I'm, I'm getting into this like ever since i like hit the whole like zen mm-hmm. mindset thing where it's like Every, the extraordinary the ordinary becomes extraordinary yeah it's almost like what is the purpose of like striving super hard like obviously work hard like like do things that you enjoy yeah but don't do them for the wrong reasons mm-hmm. right so like i kind of feel like with this podcast right it's like it's like if somebody looks at it and they're like wow you guys like put a lot of effort into it really it feels like no effort 
<laughs> you right? Like right. To, to you, it feels like no effort, right? To me, yeah. it feels like no effort. But we have these overlays. We have all this like stuff going on. But I feel like that's how it should just be. Like that's a very like puristic yeah. approach versus like being like, okay, if we do this, we're gonna get this many views. Right. Blah blah blah. It like doesn't really matter about um, the outcome. It's more of a creative exercise. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I so, mean, it's just so if you're listening to it, great. If you're not listening yeah. to it, well, you won't even know that we're saying great but great you know it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 and then i feel like that's how a lot of artists like musicians like mm-hmm. they're like oh they're doing it so pure in the beginning and then they became like commercially whatever you know yeah like you know like yeah, yeah, this yeah. became sellouts or whatever you could hear it in their music sometimes too you know like uh paramore mm-hmm. i love them in the beginning you guys are still awesome i mean the fact that you're creating music is great but um their music definitely did change but you sometimes have to – you change too, right? You do change too, but it's like are you changing for the commercial aspect or are you – like good example, uh, Vince Staples yeah. changes every album not because he's uh, trying to chase something. It's mm. because he's like doing a creative outlook. You know, He's like, I want to make it this way, entertaining. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. It really depends on your intentions. Uh, yeah, I guess so. For. Yeah, it depends on what kind of contract you got. Yeah. Oh, that's that's also true too. Business, business is <laughs> very dominating. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, all right. I thought that was interesting about Netflix. All right. So speaking of uh, creativity and stuff, I was thinking about this recently because we went to like two funerals, and I was like, I was thinking about it, and I was like, this is really what we are. We are fractals mm-hmm. of the Big Bang. Yep. Right. Okay. Because like a fractal is like you take one design and then you like you. Um, skew it and then it creates more designs right Mm -hmm. and the decisions we make the choices we make become memories for other people yeah 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 yeah. and that's what we are Mm -hmm. we're this never-ending movement of fractal creation yeah yeah. you know what i mean it's like it's like okay i'm gonna choose to do this today and then that will offset this 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 you don't even know the people that you influenced right and then, or like even just like buying something from the grocery store, that money you spent allowed that person to have more money. You know, we don't see the ramifications of our decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like, and then the whole thing about like that our decisions become our memories. And it's really like, what do you want other people to remember when you're gone? Mm-hmm. You know, like who were you? Like, do you want to be that person? Like, it, it's like, m- Monday. Obviously, everyone's gonna say nice things about you, but like the people that really remember you, it's like what legacy? Like you know, people are like, oh, I want to leave a legacy. You are leaving a legacy in every moment, right? Mm-hmm. We just don't think about it like that, right? It's like, what did you do to affect change in the world mm-hmm. in a little or big way? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think if we we spent more time like thinking about these things, we we choose our decisions differently. Yeah. You know, like that that's also why like, you know, samurai always like fixate on death. I'm the same way. I always think about it, like the finality of it, because like when you think about the finality, you're like, Oh, this could all be gone and what will I have left or what will I have enjoyed? Mm-hmm. You know? It's like again, it's another Zen Zen teaching. Yeah. Where it's like just enjoy for the sake of enjoying. Yes. And just never forget actions of consequences. Big or small. Right. Yeah. Very true. Right? Like, yeah. I think that's... Oh, you look like you're thinking about something. Uh, I was trying to think of something to add on to that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what else? That's all what you want to do, right? Leave something good behind, in a sense. But, like, but what is good, you know what I mean? Like, no, I know, I know, I know. But, like, uh, it depends, I guess. <laughs> But that's why I was saying, like, just understand actions have consequences. That's all. Right. Because then it's just like, right. well, you know what I mean? Like, because then I'm thinking about other people I know. It's like, oh, man, you shouldn't make that decision because that could be, you know, a bad ramification later on. You know what I mean? Like, like let's say you choose not to do something. Mm-hmm. And then, oh, sorry, I need, like, a substantial example. Okay. Yeah. Like, let's say... Um, Let's say, like, you try to think of, like, a very, like, good example <laughs> without, like, picking on a specific example. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, okay, so, like, right. let's say you're just, like, okay, I'm done with 
education. You're okay. like, I'm done. Uh-huh. I'm never going to like do this yeah, yeah, ever yeah. again. Okay. But then it's like, but the ramification is you're going to have to educate later mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah. You know, it's like that will catch up with you. Or it's like, I'm not going to brush my teeth. It's like, okay, you know, you got to get cavities then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's just like coming to terms with that and realizing that makes your see i feel like people are too short-sighted as well okay like it's so difficult because people are like oh you have to enjoy the moment yeah but you have to enjoy the moment without being too nearsighted Mm -hmm. right if you're nearsighted and farsighted at least that way you're you're choosing wisely like i have i have two two quotes that go with this um uh life's life's an adventure play wisely i said that one before like Mm -hmm. a long time in one of the videos i created okay um, and then the other one is uh, look first, then jump, right? <laughs> okay. Because other people are like, oh, jump, jump, and then it'll work itself out later. Right, like, yeah, yeah, jump yeah, head yeah. first in, something like that. But it's like, no, you got to look, bro. Right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What if there's jagged rocks at the bottom? You can't just like go all like free spirited willy nilly. You need to think about the consequences and then like, okay, is this the right move? All right, jump. But when you jump, you jump fully because you know this is the decision you got to make. Well, yeah, I guess if that's what you want to do, right? I mean, of course, yeah, yeah, but it's like it's like okay. So the instant gratification is if I, if I, uh, okay. So if if I'm if I eat a bunch of chocolate mm. and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed now. But it's like you're not looking at the ramifications later on. It's like, well, this will rot your teeth if you don't brush them, right? You know, or like, mm-hmm. you know, like there's so many examples like that. But always look and then jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Because, like, these these things, I guess that's what they call karma. Uh, you know, like, uh, people, like, uh, your choices become your karma, and then that builds up, right? Because it's like, it's like, if you just, like, your decision now will impact other things, which is the karma of that decision. Mm-hmm. Not using it in the terms of, like, uh, I do the good thing and then good right, thing will come back. Right, in metaphysical it's, sense. It, it's more of like an actual logical like action reaction. Yeah, yeah, You know, the karma, of, weigh the karma of every decision you make mm-hmm. and then ask yourself, do I want to do this right. or not? And then if you decide to do it or not, do those things fully. Like yeah. don't, don't yeah, hesitate. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's like, okay, I'm going <laughs> to half brush my teeth then. You know, you're like, no, just do it correctly then. Yeah, okay. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just hit me. Hit me hard. Oh, you? Yeah, because you went to one. You... Yeah, but like seeing it. Like, I, I see what you seeing mean. Seeing it like face to face, you're like, oh, I get it. Like, you got what we're doing here. And like the ramification. I, f- I find that like with loss, like those moments of loss, like funerals and stuff, mm-hmm. that's the only time people really focus on the things that matter in life. Because I was listening to like some some of the things they were saying, sure. I was like, "Oh my god, this is so real." I was like, "This is true," but how often do you spend in your life like listening to the realities of the situation? Uh, yeah, but that's uh, what I'm saying. Instant gratification. Yeah, it's like. But I guess that's what these things are for, right? But I, what again. I'm saying is, it's like it's like too late for those people that have already gone. No, I know, but it's more for that to remind the ones that are still alive. Yeah. No, for sure, for sure. Right. I'm just saying we should do it more often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But we forget. I text... Because uh, of life. Yeah, exactly. It was so funny. I was like, I was like, oh, man, like, what would people say about me? And then I was thinking, about, like, what would people say about my friends? And then I thought about Wob, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to text this dude what <laughs> I, I think of him now before it's too late. Right. So if you're listening to this, good exercise is to just let people know what you think before it's too late. Mm-hmm. Unless it's negative, maybe keep, <laughs> maybe, maybe keep that to yourself. But I mean, like, like if you're thinking about something positive, you're like, I haven't, because you know, some people should be like, oh, okay, I'll just let them, give them a piece of my mind. It's like, no, again, actions have consequences. You're gonna make that pe- person feel bad, right? <laughs> Unless you want to make them feel bad, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah, all the, all the rights to do that. Yeah, look first, then jump. Right. All right. So, uh, so it might come back at you. It might. It might just understand actions have consequences. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So next week, I kind of want to do a book review. 
<laughs> yeah, we were talking about that. I was like, I know. I but know. Is, does that become like a full episode? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, does that become a full episode, or is that like a midway through the week, just a short one-off? You know. What do you mean midway through the week? I think it's just like its own thing. Like a full, like it would be like a weekly episode. Oh no no no! Like whenever we get an interesting book to talk about. But, so it won't be it won't be like it won't take the place of a weekly roundup or will. No. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because oh, they, they can oh, be yeah. short and they can be long. Yeah, right? separate video. Yeah, like, okay, cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. Right, but sometimes we do talk about it here too, right? It yeah, we do. It's just it be relates, but it's but we never like can go specifically yeah. into the book. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, so look forward to some weekly roundups. I mean, book reviews. <laughs> These are the weekly roundups. These are the weekly roundups. Yeah. All right. Till next time. Live long and prosper. Yeah. Karma's a bit. Say it easy. See ya.